Hello and welcome to Asia Berlin's Fostering Investments for Women-Led Indian Startups. Welcome. I hope you're staying happy and healthy wherever you are, especially for my wonderful friends from India and also from Germany. It's a beautiful day here in Berlin and I'm super, super excited for two things. One, it's sunny and bright. And the second is we have some fantastic power women investors and founders who are here to share some fantastic insights with you. And now I would love to um, extend, invite Dr. Raina Saida. And I'm Tina joining you from the Berlin studios and stay on with us for some fantastic conversations. Hello, um, thank you very much, Tina, for, for inviting me for today's uh, Asia Berlin event on Phoebe, female entrepreneurship, Berlin and India, on investing in Indian entrepreneurs expanding to Germany. Um, I'm very happy to welcome you on behalf of the Senate and to see so many uh, on, of these power women on the panel which we already know for, for part of them, at least for uh, a certain time now. And we are cooperating with, including Tina, of course, she, who is a, also an entrepreneur in Berlin. Uh, and, uh, and she's also an Asia Berlin ambassador. The overall event is organized by Amrita for NPACT, also an Asia Berlin ambassador. And uh, so we have, we have Mali from, from, from Asia, Asia Berlin ambassador. So we have already a quite strong power women in our network. And uh, we are very happy to host this event today um, in the context of Asia Berlin. And um, as, as you all know, we have now for a couple of years already the project Female Entrepreneurship in Berlin and India, where we focus on cooperation of uh, women founders in Berlin and India and uh, would like to strengthen the cooperation and empower these groups in India but also in Berlin uh, for playing a bigger uh, role in the startup ecosystems in their countries and globally of course. Uh, all about Asia Berlin is globally being connected to, to cooperate globally, to cooperate with, with partners in Asia and Berlin. And uh, for Phoebe, it's it's concentrating, of course, on women entrepreneurs. So we we are helping female founders to get contacts and advice for founding companies. And we we have uh, programs which are concentrating on the entrepreneur themselves and other programs that are concentrating on the the infrastructure uh, for these entrepreneurs. So accelerators, incubators, programs that are helping uh, startups, uh, women startups to get successful. Today, it's about investing and uh, and it is also about investing in, in a time which is a bit difficult because it's corona time still here of course and in india and uh, and i think the phoebe program where very well shows how important it is is to have a continuous cooperation because we started phoebe of course in times where everything was possible um, traveling events activities so it was quite easy to meet each other Today we have to work virtually, so we can't go meet for each and every event in person. And, of, and we did not have a delegation trip last year, and it will be difficult to have one this year too. So we have to adapt, and we will do that also with this event we are hosting today here together with ANPACT. So I think that's that's one of the main messages of, of today, is that we have to cooperate in, 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 in good and in bad times and, and, and we would like to encourage to, uh, to strengthen this cooperation and to show also German uh, corporates and uh, investors uh, the potential of women founders in India and also vice versa to show Indian uh, uh, startups, um, women-led startups, the potential of uh, expanding to Europe through Berlin. And so that's the reason why we have uh, women founders in Berlin who founded in Berlin um, or who expanded to Berlin to be active in, in Europe. And I think we have a good, good mix of uh, people today on the panel. And I'm looking forward to the discussion of the panel. I just would like to use the, the, this uh, event today also to announce further events uh, on diversity. Um, so Asia Berlin, the next Asia Berlin event will take place on 23 June 
on uh, LGBT plus uh, cooperation, so diversity will stay the, the motto of the month. And both female entrepreneurship and LGBT plus cooperation will be play also a big role during the Asia Berlin Summit. And we would like to invite you today already uh, for uh, the summit, which will take place from 4 to 10 October. And it will take place in Berlin also uh, physically. So we will have a hybrid event. So you, you can travel to Berlin. Uh, we hope that will be possible also from India. And you can um, participate online as well. So we would like to have both physical meetings of people, which I think is getting more and more necessary in these times, but also the possibility of participating online as we do that today and now. And uh, so with this, these words, I again would like to welcome you and wish you best success for a fruitful cooperation and a interesting discussion today on this event. Thank you very much. Hi, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Will Doubt. I work for NPECT. And I'm here to tell you a little bit um, about the joint initiative called FEBI, which is part of the joint effort between the Berlin Senate, uh, the GIZ and NPECT to strengthen and develop um, the ecosystems in Asia and Berlin. FEBI stands for Female Entrepreneurship India Berlin. And since 2018, we have been working with various um, startups, which are women-led and enablers, to um, strengthen and develop their capacities through different initiatives. So one of them is the delegation trips that Rainer already mentioned, but we also do um, capacity building in form our, of our program designers lab, which we have some participants uh, with us um, today, and uh, networking. Um, I've also got uh, some good news to announce uh, for the summer. So soon we will be starting a virtual landing pad and an investor readiness program for Indian startups. And um, what is great about today's topic is that uh, not only um, is it something that concerns the startups in India and Berlin, but also the enablers, so different accelerators and incubators. It's a hot topic, um, especially because uh, not only um, late stage startups, but also early stage startups have difficulties with investment. And I'm really excited to be here today um, to discuss um, what are opportunities in investment, especially for uh, women-led startups, and how they can better prepare to raise funds. Um, so before we start uh, with the next point in the program, we're going to have a look at a small promo video of the Asia Berlin Summit. Thank you. I am pleased to welcome you here today to the Asia Berlin Summit. The competition is extremely high in Asia. They're really always on the rise. What's the next idea and how you can scale it, how you can improve yourself. But people are very open-minded in general in here. So when it comes to regulations, trying new things, trying new concepts, the energy here is just right for that. Something around 3,000 uh, connections have been formed with people that have been networking together. Where people were genuinely interested in, in learning. Um, and likewise, seeing a diverse set of investors that aren't necessarily continuously promoted, but yet come from different areas. In reality, I think it is conferences like this which brings people from really far geographies together in a somewhat cosy setting. I think that's when true connections are forged and a lot of these conversations will continue after the conference ends. That's fine. Hi and welcome. Um, last year's Asia Berlin Summit was a fantastic one. I was there, Mali was there, and um, we hope that you can make it this time as well. Joining right now for a fireside chat with me is Simran and Mali. This is going to be a fantastic one, and I can't tell you how excited I was just preparing for it. So, hi, I'm Tina. I'm co-founder Useristics. I, I've been in Berlin for about four years now, and I decided to start my second startup and um, Berlin's been just fantastic. The cosmopolitan and very, very international audience has just made it just wonderful. Having said that, I'm also an Asia Berlin ambassador, just like Molly, and uh, we help founders 
uh, network and um, bring build out connections and open up opportunities for partnerships and investments as well. So please welcome, and I'd like to hand over to Mali to kick off with in introductions, and then we'll go on to Simran. Thank you so much, Tina, and the whole Azure Berlin gang of amazing ambassadors. I'm very, very happy to be here today and to also promote what we are doing here in Berlin for people that raising fantastic companies and technologies and keen to open Europe through Berlin, because we all know that Berlin is the hub uh, also for German market, but also for Europe. So a bit about myself. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I built several companies. Uh, since I came to Berlin seven years ago, I built W Lounge. W Lounge is, I wish I had that when I started. So it's a network. It's connecting startup and technology together. But we're working in a different channels. Uh, we build like a flagship program for, um, we we'll call it their leadership for women specifically, that we see the gap when they are going to fundraise. We support venture capitals also with, um, um, I would say, with scouting for technology and also startups. Um, the focus is definitely access to capital, access for skills, access to knowledge and mentorship. Uh, in another hat, I'm also raising Magda Group, which is a fund to be able not to be only the connector and the facilitator, but also uh, to deploy the capital and to make the local startups also to grow faster outside as a global players. Thank you. Thank you, Mali. That was really wonderful. I admi I've been admiring your journey so far that I've been I've known you, and would love to hear a bit on a bit from Simran as well. Hi, Tina, and hello, everyone. So I just talk about Berlin. Had a bit of a deja vu moment. I was last time in Berlin several years back. I vividly remember it was for a concert by U2, and it was Nelson Mandela's birthday, and they sang. <laughs> So it has a very, very spiritual connection with me and very fond memories. So guten tag to everybody in Deutschland and namaste to everybody in India. So I, yeah, I'm Indian. I grew up in India and uh, moved to Germany for studying. And uh, if you say India is my birth country, Germany is my work country. That's where I've learned all about working and professional life and built my career. So uh, very grateful today to be, you know, in this bridge, uh, <laughs> bridge kind of conference. And uh, yeah, I'm the founder uh, uh, of Power Women. We are among the first few uh, globally ed tech platforms built by women for women. Um, yeah, strongly believe that women need to be in all places and uh, especially at the top and uh, not only to reach there, but also stay there. And that's what we do at Power Women. We are building tables for women. And yeah, and a bit about me, a uh, quick uh, worked mostly in, I studied technology, work mostly in the product development space. Uh, a few years in the corporate and now uh, building my own company. Thank you very much for the opportunity and look forward to this conversation. Thank you, Simran. Um, fantastic to hear your journey, especially what you're doing with Power Women. And um, just to kick off uh, the discussions, um, since this is about investments and fostering um, support for um, women founders, uh, especially from India, uh, how uh, it would be one, it would be wonderful to understand how um, what does uh, an investable startup look like for you? Um, maybe Mali can start. In a Okay, um, yeah, I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy to approach that, and this is something that it's actually a very smart question to start with because it's something that it's not changing in between cultures or in between markets. So um, all of the I would call it smart investors before everything they see themselves also as responsible for these startups uh, um, um, not to look. i would say for the startup growth and success so as an investor you have to know what are you bringing to this 
cap table with these startups and on the same time to screen very carefully the team. I always said like, you know, people saying like it's a marriage, it's actually even more than marriage because uh, probably you will stay with them for five to seven years at least. And at the moment we see a new startup coming in, we screen the, the people, the, the, the personality behind this product. Because if you tend to change the world with the deep technology, we need to know if you are the right person to do it, if you are the right person that um, willing to take the risk, willing to take the chance because we are in it together. So investors, or I would say the, the new generation of investors see themselves also as part of the team, taking care of open doors, supporting growth stage, fundraising also the not only the, the pre-seed, but also the the A round, B round, and at the same time, you have to make sure that your product is fit to the market that you're going to start with. Um, and again, comparing cultures and market, there are some companies that even myself I'm supporting and I'm part of them I'm part of in, and if they don't understand the market that I'm going to at least start with, how they can show a fast growth or a fastest growth as they can show, and the market fit, that will be a problem. So if you live in India, you're probably an expert on your local. And if you want to build technology and you want to build an impact company, a sustainable product, you have to show before everything how you will make it successful in your own market and then immediately show the scalability outside. So it's a lot about the vision, but before that, what are you already doing in your local market? That's wonderful. Um, Mali, you mentioned about um, sustainability and sustainable growth. What exactly did you mean by that? I, I, it would be lovely to kind of see an investor's perspective. Um, especially when we know that users are very, very important and you touched upon some fantastic points on product market fit and understanding if there's really a market need. Um, what would, how would you define that? And, and what would you say that a founder should remember when it comes to sustainable product and business growth? Yeah, Tina, thanks for the question. I, I believe First of all, that we are talking about this for several years, but due to COVID, thank God it came to be a mainstream. Everyone talking about this, but not sure that everyone understand what they are talking about when they refer sustainability. So what we want to see is actually companies that from day one, they build a team, they build a product, and they build a growth in a sustainable way. So you know how I'm calling it? I'm calling it a feminine economy because show me one woman that in the last 200 years built any company that it wasn't to give back or tech for good or product for production for good or design for good and this is what becoming right now a mainstream and this is what we want to see more and more in startups you can show us revenue you can still be very focused on fast growth, but on the same time, focus on the values and doing good. So all these values, it's a feminine economy without even touching gender, because I'm not talking about gender here, I'm talking about mindset. Why and how you build your company and how you address that to the market. Fantastic. Um... Thank you, Mali, again. And um, so, Simran, I would want to hear from you as well, from your personal background and experience. What is for you? Uh, what's your uh, definition or what should I say, assessment of how do you look at a sustainable, uh, sorry, investable startup? Sorry, it's too much of yeah, a so when, uh, Thank you. When Mali was speaking, I was making my points. I think clearly, uh, uh, scalability of business right especially in the digital world that's one of the key factors a business model is very important and now with the whole trend of doing business for good yeah so everybody's talking about it i know we used to have this course a couple of years back uh, at business school but now the whole positioning of products people have become so mindful after covid what they are buying how they are consuming 
impact on the environment. So sustainability, thankfully, is back and it is no longer just, you know, uh, something, a CSR initiative, but it's in the core strategic agenda of organization. So that's a wonderful change. But for me, though, I think the main, if you ask me, uh, what is the key thing? The, the one main thing to look at is the founding team. Yeah, so yeah. that is uh, the make or break. So who are the founders, how committed they are, who are the early uh, stage employees. So that is pretty much, I think, the make or break in terms of the, the key. The key because, this, you know, startups will pivot. Things will change. Your business model might yeah. evolve. Your product might change based on, you know, uh, the market or your experience or early feedback. But what yeah. literally, you know, will will drive it is the founding team. So that, very, I, I think, for me, is the number one in looking for investments. Fantastic. And um, so, when it comes to early stage startups, and um, you know, the startups that are trying to scale, whether it is scaling from India or startups based in Germany and trying to scale outside. Are there any differences that you look at? Like, what's your criteria? What what should the woman founder out there, you know, listening to this conversation take away? Um, Mali, would you like to start? Um, happy to. And actually, I have like concrete example. Um, and thank you for asking this question. Um, you know, every time I'm speaking with, I would say even like a foreigner founder, um, and they said, like, we would like to open or scale to Europe. We're very strong in India. I mean, this is a concrete example. Uh, and, and we really want to learn more about the, the I would say, Europe market in um, consumers to, to scale to, to, to Europe. But Berlin for them will be the next step or the first step to scale to Europe. So. Uh, coming back to the concrete example, they were like fantastic team founders from India and they uh, they were focused on the legal tech, brilliant uh, team, very smart product and actually they're also showing great revenue for um, really controlling their own market. So everything was on spot. So when I started to ask some questions, why Europe, why Germany, what are you searching, what do you need, who are kind of like your perfect customers, who you want to reach out to, they didn't even know about the GDPR. For example, that was like a specific example. And I said, hey, 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 let's go back, let's do some research, let's do some homework, and then let's okay. reopen the discussion. So this Give is an example a, of how much you really need to minutes. be ready for your market and understanding the market and working with local people. And definitely when it comes to networking to gain these skills and knowledge, mentorship and access. Um. Yeah, GDPR is important. I remember when it came, the whole startup that I was working in was had gone completely upside down, and and sometimes it can really get confusing. Um, um, Simran, would you have something to add here? Um, yeah. I would love. Is, is there something that women founders have struggled with, or um, some pieces that you would like to add? I think I generally uh, what I could uh, share is uh, my experience based on what Germany has to offer. Right, of course, India, Germany are you know great trade partners, but Germany has uh, having worked there. So I started, I, I worked there for several years in a very state of the art manufacturing facility and uh, saw some of the programs uh, being launched very early on. And thinking about that, I feel there is so much innovation, there is so much scientific excellence that goes on whether it is at the universities, which are world-class universities, or you know the depth of knowledge that sits in some of these research labs, innovation centers, lots of patent filing that happens. So yeah. there is a lot uh, uh, of opportunity here to collaborate, uh, especially uh, you know in uh, deep tech, in fields such as health tech. Uh, clean tech is another uh, field where uh, Germany and Europe in general is uh, very very ahead of the rest of the world so if you are looking at these these sectors uh, these industries i think it's a great place uh, to build out uh, uh, build partnerships reach out uh, to, to you know wonderful research work happening we saw you know even during the pandemic the vaccine uh, coming from there right so, so 
So a, lo a lot of, uh, a lo it's a very great, uh, how do you say, scientific center of excellence. So I think that's a very good place to tap into. And the other thing is that, especially if you're in uh, later stages, right, of a startup, there are things such as, or if you're in health, healthcare or something, you know, focus on precision, focus on quality. Uh, these are kind of things where I would say Germany really does well. Yeah, of course, when you're building your MVP, you're right. At the beginning, that's not where you, you know, want to set up all your processes. But when you're scaling or, you know, you are also market differences, right? So it's an environment or society which is very much focused on doing things in a certain way, very, very different uh, uh, from India in some ways. But there's a huge value creation that can happen between the two economies. Uh, yeah, so I feel, uh, you know, as soon as you say made in Germany, there's this whole yeah. uh, brand that gets added. You know, it has this perception of very high quality. So especially if you're building uh, high-tech products or uh, building for healthcare or, or certain industries, there is a lot of learning that can happen. So if your startup is in that domain, it's a great place to reach out even to universities, to professors, to collaborate, innovation centers. So that would be my two cents on it. <laughs> so um, I'm glad you talked about collaboration and partnership and, you know, Mali also kind of brought it out a couple of times. Um, what would you say for someone, especially out of outside of Germany, like I personally have been here in Germany for like four years now, I learned a bit of German. Um, what would you say that, you know, people who want to work with folks here in Germany or German com uh, companies, what are the things that we need to remember or they need to keep in mind when it comes to cultural differences, cultural working styles? Um, yeah, I, I think that's very important and also very underplayed. Um, so I just wanted to make sure <laughs> that, you know, from my personal experience, this is something that we do talk about today because that plays a huge role in the mindsets that you talked about, Simran, as well. Um, Simran, wh why not we start with you with this question and then move to Mali, perhaps? <laughs> Thank you. So this draw, I had flashbacks of this intercultural workshop I had done several years back <laughs> working with uh, with India and Germany so yes of course the cultures are extremely uh, you know very different the language, you know the frequency the society the way of working is very different but that's what's also exciting because you can learn so much from each other right so I think in India um, being the large market it is uh, you know 1.3 billion people for German investor we are a nation very much focused on um, you know, jugar, which means frugal innovation. It's a Hindi term. I think, Tina, you would know, right? So for us, we have very limited access to very limited resources, right? And you need to innovate fast. You have, you know, that's, that's the little thing that you have. So even growing up in India, even, you know, very young, you learn uh, the term called jugar, which is just basically frugal innovation, right? Whereas Germany on the other side is very well planned, very well thought of, very deep planning. So it is a very... Uh, I think, of course, where probably much more, uh, I would say, the German culture might struggle in certain ways is it's about flexibility or adaptability, right? And which is uh, being a bit more agile, which uh, which is something that, you know, you can counterbalance. And um, yeah, I think where uh, India probably has a lot to offer is in terms of the whole uh, digital transformation, which has happened by only India and Asia, right? It has been massive, the scale and speed at which the whole transformation has happened. And there I feel Europe, not only Germany, Europe in general has, you know, been a bit slower, uh, uh, lagged a bit. So I think that's another area where the two could collaborate uh, and, and work together. In terms, I think if you are looking to uh, move to Germany, work there, uh, uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, understanding the cultural language definitely helps a lot. <laughs> till, I, till I started speaking it, with, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's some of the best friends you will make if you, if you go there. It takes time. Uh, it takes time, but when you build relationships, whether it's for work, networks, uh, they, they will be for life and they will be wonderful. Uh, so from my side, it's, it's a great place to be, to learn about technology, to uh, learn about processes, uh, uh, quality. So there, there are the great things that both have to offer to each other. Certainly. Uh, Mali. Mali um, I mean, 
you know, this is what I live in the daily basis, uh, bringing smart people technologies to Germany because we need that. And I have to tell you, like also uh, following what Simon mentioned, like the balance is the most important. Like, you know, as German, we tend to sometimes go to the market too slow, too late, uh, miss the, the, the global competition before we even, you know, started uh, in the market. And these are things that we are dealing here with, I would say, the German culture in like, wait for everything to be perfect because if you are a founder you have to adapt the idea that nothing is perfect you know let the market speak let the users teach you and not teach yourself because you think it's not perfect uh, and this is something yes it's 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 in the genie it's 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 it in the culture and we are also working on this a lot go without saying when it comes to female founder it's even worth but uh, I want to say that I'm working very closely also with the Berlin Senate and, and, and politics level. And I want to mention India in a positive way because also India um, well known for the deep tech, for the techie part, for the techie people. Mm -hmm. And um, I know in person that, you know, if you have a good technology, a good product, mm -hmm. if you want to open subsidiary here, you will get a lot of support from the government here and on top of it if you even want to build subsidiary to hire people or even to relocate all these visa topics and so on um, india is absolutely one of the preferred countries that usually usually uh, without any over promising the, the process usually are like easier and faster so this is something important to say and regarding the culture, regarding building companies, I think that the balance is the most important thing. Because if you are building a company and you showed success in your own market, try to do a fundraising as much as you can, as fast as you can. And coming back, you know, Tina, of what we are always talking, the network is the key. You don't feel alone. You don't feel that you're coming for a strange place um you have mentors you have venture capitals you have corporates that you can always reach out to because you're part of something bigger than yourself and this is what networks or network that's focusing on the business side not only on the social side here to 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 provide you know for those that are absolutely can also benefit from the ecosystem but also can give a lot to the ecosystem back Fantastic points. I mean, um, I'm so glad I raised this question. So since we have very little time left, uh, would you like to just quickly um, talk about, you know, what are some of the resources that, um, um, you know, women founders can get access to, whether you're coming in from India or, um, you know, Indian women founders here in Berlin. So that, I think that would be fantastic. Just quick, actionable resources. I think that would be lovely. Uh, Simran? Yeah, so I mean, I'm just uh, uh, thinking about, you know, women's, women founders in general, yeah, looking to expand, looking to move to the point of networking, I would say reach out. There are so many, you know, yesterday I was in the impact program, we had a presentation from one of the accelerators, which was just set up for women. So there are so many accelerators, which is uh, thanks to Me Too movement, there are so many women's community, just like ours, Mali runs one. I'm running on Power Women, so reach out, tap those uh, networks. Uh, there, there's a, it's a great place to not only find mentors, co-founders, board members, but also, uh, you know, it's a, entrepreneurship is a very lonely journey. It's a very, yeah. very tough, lonely, tough journey. And uh, I mean, being a woman, I mean, we didn't speak about all the bias today and, you know, how difficult it is to raise, raise money. Uh, you know, that there are so few female partners, uh, like I have been reading up since yesterday all these statistics and it is it is quite shocking, right? We have to acknowledge that there's a ma massive, massive problem uh, in the whole investing uh, space and uh, fundraising for women. So, uh, so yes, uh, my uh, two cents would be reach out, connect. Over the last one year, I've met so many phenomenal women, women who partners at VC firms, women who have founded their own VC firms, women who've gone on to uh, build unicorns. And it is just so inspiring when you meet all these women because it's 
it looks very much real it looks very much doable and the world has gone so much it's it's completely virtual so you could be i don't know joining techstar you could do y combinator or any of the accelerators in berlin and be sitting anywhere and no issues if you have small kids in the evening to stay up and network so yeah make the most of it uh, yeah just have the courage don't be afraid and go for it uh, fantastic um <laughs> uh, mali I would love yeah, to hear I from want you to say to Simran go. here, yeah, it's capable and we're doing this, building unicorns, raising funds. It is. It's that this is the reality, okay? Let's stop talking about maybe it will come in the future. It is happening. There are phenomenal women all over the world, including Israel and, and the US and Asia that actually doing this and, and, and this is what we're building here, you know, raising a fund, but on the same time building significant uh, a network to open these doors. Um, and I just want to add on what uh, uh, Simran mentioned. In Berlin, I learned something that I couldn't see in Tel Aviv and I couldn't see, by the way, in New York as well. There are so many accelerators that can, um, I would say, also help you to, to build a team, but on the same time to really open the market for you. Like as a W launch, we are really like build a partnership with those accelerators also to be the funnel for startup to step in, but they are not only open their, uh, I would say network, but they're really investing in you. They are literally giving you kind of like an amount every month to give you a year and a half time to build your product locally. So there's many things that I've learned that Germany is very strong at and, and Berlin, as I mentioned, most of the things happening here in Berlin, even if you are working in other cities in Germany, everything eventually comes to Berlin. And I think if you are in, in India and you are searching for opportunities, search for the networks, search for those that can really give you access. And you see that they have the track record for supporting startups and growth. Couldn't agree more. Um, I'm, I'm part of a support network. Asia Berlin is one. And uh, it, yeah. if it weren't for this network, I wouldn't have met people. I wouldn't have had a place to actually solve problems. And otherwise, you know, internet has its own limitations. Everybody has a point of view. But when you really hear from someone who's already done it, it's 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 real. You know, it's authentic. Um, Thank you very, very much. And like Simran said, we couldn't talk about bias, which is one of the things that I really wanted to uh, raise today. But hopefully we will have another chat very, very soon. Um, I am absolutely privileged to be here in this conversation between Simran and Mali. And uh, feel free to reach out to us. We are on LinkedIn. We are on Twitter. Um, look out for the Asia Berlin posts and we are tagged there. Send us an invite and or a DM, but be sure to mention that you heard it from this event with Asia Berlin, Impact and Febby. Thank you again and we'll be back soon um, for the fireside chat with some, another set of wonderful uh, women founders. So I can't wait for that. So at this point, we'll break for a short promo Grab a coffee if you need to, but we'll be here waiting for you. When I think of what the most impactful support to offer a women entrepreneur would be, a holistic approach is what is necessary at the moment. Identifying pain points that women go through at every stage of entrepreneurial life cycle and proposing an intervention at each stage. Our department has been conducting stakeholder consultations and analysis with women in the tech space, also with incubators, nonprofit organizations. We also have developed a dedicated program called Women in Support of Entrepreneurs in State. A sum of rupees 5 million has been allocated 500 million, sorry, has been allocated for this program and an outcome of the stakeholder workshops will further define this program. We are also engaging with international GIA partners like Berlin, Germany, and we will be
charting bilateral programs for the mutual benefit of women entrepreneurs. With well-designed program for upskilling, leadership grooming, and mentorship to the women in the ecosystem, our government is committed to drive innovation and value or for the ecosystem. Thank you. Namaskara. Hello, my name is Angela De Giacomo, and for the past eight years, I've been investing in startup companies and have met a lot of founders. Today, I was asked, what is the most imp impactful support for female entrepreneurs that I can think of? I can think of a few things. One is, of course, every founder, including female founders, need access to capital. And it would be great if there would be more funds um, investing in female founders or even a female-led um, VC funds. The other thing that I think uh, female entrepreneurs need to know is they shouldn't give away too many shares in the first few rounds. That is something that I've been seeing over the last few uh, years, um, that female founders have been too generous in giving away shares. The other thing which I believe uh, female founders need is support, access to like-minded entrepreneurs and people, uh, access to mentoring and um, coaching, as well as to more visibility on stages and panels. I also feel that there should be more role models who show that uh, female entrepreneurs can be both um, a successful entrepreneur, but also a caring and loving mother. And so I would like to see many more female entrepreneurs on stages, panels, and uh, uh, on the uh, stock floor uh, listing their um, future successful businesses. All the best. Hello and welcome back. Uh, we are super excited. This is the second favorite part of this whole Fireside Chat. Um, just for those who are maybe who haven't been able to join before. Hi, I'm Tina. I live in Berlin, been here for four years, co-founder of uh, my company, which is called Useristics. I started in Germany this year and um, um, my company is about how founders and founding teams can understand their users better so they are more set up for success. And joining me today um, is Tanya, who I worked with at Babel just before I started my company. And she's now a founder, so, so proud of her journey, and also is Soumya. Um, so sh shall we uh, go ahead and um, uh, start with a quick round of introduction? Maybe Tanya, over to you. And then once Tanya's done, we'll have uh, Soumya over. Hi. Hi, Tina. Hi, everyone. Uh, super excited to be here today. Uh, my name is Tanya. I'm the co-founder of Wonderpath. Um, in one sentence, Wonderpath is the next generation feedback platform designed to make feedback at work continuous, actionable, and human. We believe that we will, uh, with feedback and upskilling at work, transform the way professional journeys are uh, seen, especially since work is changing so much. Uh, a little bit, a little bit more about my professional journey. I grew up in India, studied statistics, wanted to get into the world of data science, but ended up getting pulled into consulting. Worked with KPMG, um, advised a lot of international companies on their go-to-market strategy uh, for launching products in India, uh, and then later moved into um, Barcelona in 2016 to do my MBA. Uh, that's where I met my co-founder, and uh, this is a this is a funny story, but we'll probably dive into it a little bit later uh, with Tina's questions. Uh, worked on a couple of projects, lived in Boston, and then moved to Berlin, where I started working at Babel in the edtech space. And um, this this is sort of like an accelerated path path to um, touching global expansion and thinking about challenges not at the local level but at scale level and uh, with Babel working with the product marketing team I worked a lot on how to use product as a lever to drive user acquisition how to get to know your users before you get to know your numbers and uh, that sort of like pulled me into building my own company here in Berlin um, and I will actually pass on back to Tina. Thanks. Uh, Tanya, I love the fact that you talked about the users because I think that's where you really have to understand them better, then build the product and then build marketing for a truly sustainable product growth. 
Um, okay, I just wanted to update before I can pass it on to Soumya. Jugnu is also joined. Uh, welcome, Jugnu. We are super, super excited to have you here too. Uh, we'll start with um, a quick round of introductions from Soumya, and then we'll move on to Jugnu. So we'll have it very, very brief so that we can really move, we can touch upon more topics if we can. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Soumya Tyagarajan, um, and I'm basically we are based in Hamburg, but actually my startup journey started with Berlin Startup Night. Of course, I'll get back to that when we have discussions with Tina and during our panel. Um, basically, I'm a co-founder of Fovia Tech GmbH, GmbH and um, we focus on products where we are able to uh, combine technologies together. The first two technologies that we focus on is artificial intelligence and 2D materials. Um, within 2D materials, our main focus is towards graphene. So what we do is um, we kind of, you know, try to bring in technologies and adapt it to various B2B platforms. So one example would be our first product where we have developed graphene based flexible sensors, which will be inserted into the passenger seats or even we focus on cross industrial applications like healthcare. Um, the main three U UVPs that we have to our product is to um, bring out the ergonomics assessment, then uh, come up with biometric assessment, and also we provide comfort uh, to our products. So um, basically, because of our innovation and technology um, expertise, we have come up with a new product line, which we have termed as hybrid products or hybrid products. Um, so yeah, this is what we do, and there is more to come. Please keep checking our websites. And um, just to have a brief introduction about uh, myself, um, I'm from India and um, I've been living in Germany from 2016. I've been working with Deutsch Syndrome for Lufthun Rumfahrt and then two and a half years into research, then I thought, why not start my own company? And uh, that is how I founded Fovia Tech with my co-founder Chandrakan Bote, who is also an um, AI artificial intelligence expert and uh, who happens to be in the sessions as well. So thank you, everyone. Fantastic. AI and a woman founder, that is phenomenal. Um, Jugnu, you have such an um, impressive uh, profile. I was just going through and it's, it, I found it intimidating, but uh, let's just get started. Can we have a quick, uh, quick uh, introduction and uh, quickly jump into the conversations on um, what it takes to be a woman founder and the fantastic insights? Thank you, Tina. It's a pleasure to be here. I can't believe it's already my second virtual Asia Berlin, thanks to Rainer, Alex, and several of you. Um, I am a first-time entrepreneur, so I'm an august company of people who have done their second startup and so on. This is my first. I suspect it will continue to be my first for a long time. Uh, I did my PhD in genetics from Cambridge, England. And then I went to Boston for my postdoc at Harvard Medical School. Then I joined a drug discovery company called Vertex Pharmaceuticals, where I was for 14 years. And somewhere in 2010, the lure to come back to India was there. So I chose to quit against all advice of my family and friends and came back to India. I consider myself a gypsy. Um, and then along with two other co-founders, we set up Sapien Biosciences, which is quite a pioneer. We have now created the largest biobank in India. What is a biobank? It systematically collects and then organizes small amounts of blood or tissue samples that are taken by hospitals for diagnosis purpose and then usually discarded after the purpose is over. So we actually collect them. This is medical waste, quote unquote and we upcycle it for R&D innovation. So these samples and data particularly is very important for all pharma, biotech, diagnostic companies for them to bring out new products. Like Somya mentioned AI. Normally in healthcare, the AI is built on data from past patients to then predict behavior of future patients. So uh, for example, in Germany, uh, in 2017, 11 university hospitals came together to create like a core biobank, which is also called a German biobank node. In case of Sapien, 
our partnerships with Apollo hospitals and many hospitals give us access to 73 hospitals across India. So we are a real pioneer. Our seed funding came from Apollo. I know we were supposed to speak about funding a little bit. So our seed funding came from Apollo and they also gave us incubation space within the hospital, which is most ideal because we are constantly running to the hospital to collect samples or data. So being on location is useful. And they also gave us their network wide access to patient samples and data. So in a way, we have a strategic investor that gave us the seed fund and the source material that is needed to get a biobank operational. So this is a journey of eight and a half years, and I'll speak more about it in subsequent discussion. Thank you. That's really nice. And I think, uh, Juvnu, you really touched upon the whole point of you know how investment is not just about money, but partnerships, network, local expertise, and just so much more. So let's just try to understand. I'll start with Tanya first. Um, Tanya, your journey as a founder had just started. Um, so walk us through um, quite quickly on what did it take for you to, you know, what, what's been investing like for an early stage startup? And, you know, just a little bit, you, uh, have you had, what kind of funds, where did you start? You know, when you're starting off your own startup, there are so many options. Did you have certain websites? Did a network help you? So help us and help the founders over the, who are really looking to start something early on. Where should they start? What can they learn from your journey? Very happy to answer this. If I had to use one word to describe funding and fundraising, it would be hustling. And um, I say this because um, my co-founder, she is uh, Greek and she started this journey of building Wonderpath, uh, we re were registered in, in Berlin uh, and we started in the beginning of 2020. And the first element of uh, building a business was, are we financially secure to take this big risk? And um, I say this because it's a very risky business. And we, as founders, we start thinking of fundraising as the ultimate goal. Uh, but early, very early on, we had very nice advisors who said to us, fundraising is uh, is an enabler. It's a way for you to get to the goal. The goal is not to raise money. The goal is to build business and build this business and provide value. So um, fundraising for us was like, since we started considering it to be the means to survive, we began with looking at public funding. And uh, if you're located in Berlin and want to register um, in Germany, there are lots of uh, resources available for you to look for government grants. Uh, my co-founder had a grant from uh, the commercial uh, agency in Berlin. Um, Followed by there are lots of cost subsidiaries called uh, something called Grundungsbonus. That you it it and you get uh, up to fifty thousand uh, of your costs returned. There's the Exist grant. So I would say just like go out there, uh, talk to fellow founders, talk to people who've registered for participation journey, and you'll hear almost everyone uh, sort of is trying to collect resources, and you. There's some background noise, um, but uh, all these resources are uh, somewhere on the web, uh, located in government websites and portals. The se second element is also to look for accelerators. So there are lots of incubators and accelerators supporting migrant founders. Um, Wonderpath is part of one of those uh, called Vision Lab. Uh, Vision Lab is an accelerator by the early bird venture capital firm here. Uh, it's specifically for founders with a background outside of Germany. And um, similarly, there are small programs uh, with co-working spaces, one of them being stealth mode uh, for women founders. So there's just lots of stuff out there. Go look for it, apply, hustle, um, and uh, know that fundraising is is not your ultimate goal it's just a way for you to get your words out there that's a brilliant point i just love that because i think when you have funding is important i mean funding is the fuel that will help you scale hire more people invest in better technology and get just more access which you can't do as just one founder or just a couple of people um, um what about Soumya? Soumya, 
what's your uh, could you share your in experience when it comes to funding and investments and <laughs> So, um, yes, I can um, give my own personal experience. I mean, um, compared to what Tanya told me, I had a very, very, very different um, pathway. Um, I, we structured our funding in various stages. So first is the pre-seed, second is the seed, third is the CDC, CDC, and so on. So now we are in the end of seed. So the pre-seed was um, brought in uh, through my mother. She was the first investor in our company and uh, she invested around 150k or something so it was a brave decision she trusted on me and she um, always she was my strength so um, that was my first uh, funding that was brought into the company and then the second funding the seed funding was started around uh, 2020 the beginning first quarter of 2020 and i brought in various german investors um, and also investors from us and um, yeah, now we are like, uh, you know, also partnering with some strategic um, partners of ours, like big MNCs uh, to finish our uh, seed funding. So um, this has been a very, uh, you know, a different um, way of choosing uh, to raise fund, at least for me, because I've never been to any accelerator. I've been invited to be a part of accelerators. I've been invited to be part of networks, um, which is like an incubation and stuff. But um, I always focused on products, product development. So I brought in funds through my own way and how I'm able to you know, convince investors and you know to have a pro broad plan and take it forward. So I've had my own way of uh, doing fundraising rather than going on a traditional path. I'm not saying it's not good. That is how it has to be done because I faced a lot of challenges and we still face a lot of challenges. So this is my experience. So thank you so much for sharing that. And after this, we will talk about challenges. But before that, um, I would like to um, have Jupnu's inputs and for a woman in science. Um, was it easy for you to fundraise? Um, how did you really go about? What were some of the considerations that probably you might have had in your conversations with investors? Was it tough? Was it easy? Um, yeah, I, I, let's let's start from there, and then we'll take it forward. Uh, Tina, it was very difficult, and it remains difficult till now. I think one should be an optimist, one should be persistent, one should be relentless. Uh, that's the only thing I would say, because some of the things that Somya and uh, um, Tanya are saying don't exist in India, at least when we started. There was absolutely no government support. Uh, working in India is that much harder than anywhere else working in life sciences with long incubation times is much harder than in software or AI, many other areas. And then when you are setting up a pioneer company, a unique company that doesn't exist, you have many more unanticipated problems. So frankly, we struggled a lot. The amount of seed money we got ran out very fast because the ground conditions were very different from what we had built the model on so we still had a lot of people we had to pay but we didn't have much money so we had to grow up very fast and instead of being able to focus only on a product that might come many years down the road we became a hybrid company where we started doing services very early on to earn our bread and butter and in an indian ecosystem to be sustainable within five years is a badge of honor that i wear because we are a company that is unlike anybody else. Our markets are all outside India. And so we had to not only create the systems, but we had to create systems that have the ethical and quality framework that is appropriate for our Western customers. So the time we started, there were every investor we would go to would find some problem. Oh, but your market is outside. You are sitting in India. You will not be able to export or the government may change this oh, but you are working with a large partner and you've given so much equity to them. So the number of excuses we heard was very long. So we ran out of money. That means founders have to stop taking salary, even if it was a small salary. It means you have to sometimes share with your colleagues that their salary will get delayed. It's one of the yeah. hardest things to do as a founder to have to tell them that their salary might be off by 20 days. 
you have to fight with customers who are extending their credit and not paying you on time because your cash flow doesn't allow you three months money in the bank. It also means going back and loaning money to the company, which again is against the advice of everybody around me. I hid it from so many people because they would just tell me, no, no, you're already spending all your life on the company. You should not put your own money in it. So I think there is no rule. You should do what you believe in. But I would say uh, invest uh, entrepreneur, particularly first time entrepreneurs, my advice would be to have a financial cushion for yourself so that if things go wrong, which they often do, you should be able to survive without the means of a salary or support for at least two years. Now that we are becoming successful, now that we have become sustainable, profitable, those same arguments are being turned around by us to say, OK, you see all these problems, we can solve it. If you're going to give us the growth uh, capital, we will go where nobody has gone before. So I think ultimately money is never easy. And we're sitting here, we all know we don't have Berlin in India. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I am very grateful that I'm here in Berlin and um, I can tell you that I can feel it here, even though we're not physically here, that even Tanya and Soumya would agree um, on the on the wonderful ecosystem that Berlin provides and um, yeah. the gateway it can be for Indian startups and and especially women founders who want to start and um, and have some sort of a base or from Berlin as the gateway in EU. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, which I couldn't find time in the investor fireside chat, is about bias. Um, I'm not going to dilly dally in, you know, having different kinds of questions, but bias is a thing, and raising funds um, for from um, raising funds is is tough. What have you faced any that you've felt, you've seen that um, you know your male uh, counterparts or you felt different? Like, um, what have been some of the stories? How how do you? What is your perspective to it? So let's start with Tanya. If you're okay to go first, I can go first. Um, there are lots of obviously like stats around women businesses uh, not being funded as much as uh, businesses led by founders that are male. Uh, of course, this is uh, the stats may vary depending on markets, depending on industry. Yeah. Um, from a founder's perspective, uh, we find it extremely challenging to, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about two things. Once uh, our first project with the same co-founder, we worked on a sustainable fashion um, business. We were working around the circular economy, and there was this whole concept of trying to explain um, to an audience that doesn't understand textile fashion uh, why this is important. So there was this huge bulk of, of course, you're women, and of course, you built a fashion business, and of course, you want money for it. Um, and this was. This was sort of like the arena where we were, we there was self doubt, but also direct form of discrimination. And um, ex having experienced that, the reasons we dropped that project were way far from uh, funding itself. It was just like not our core competency to deal with operations, and we didn't want we didn't want to like deal with all of that. So we moved into the software space, and now things are. Um, things are easier when you have to explain an industry um, that people understand. And I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, Jubno would agree that like li people who understand life science, when you try to explain it to them, the element of 
interaction is different versus uh, if you went to someone who didn't understand your industry. So we feel like right now we're in the future of work. It's an industry that everyone understands. Uh, things are slightly easier, but there's very few women out there and you have to actively go looking for women investors or people who invest in women founders because the, no one advertises that. And uh, strangely enough, now my co-founder and I are just like tapping into all diversity networks and women angels and trying to say, please, we want our board to actually represent the founding team. We want money to come from people who believe in us, but it's, it's really challenging. Like we don't know where to start and we don't know how to find them except like networking and talking to people who know people who've invested. So that's, sort of been my experience with this. Thanks, Tanya. Uh, we have very few minutes left and I have one more question other than bias. But Soumya, if, if I were to give you just a minute, would you want to share anything in terms of how did you handle bias? I'm pretty sure this is not something that has been just to a person. Um, uh, any actionable pieces of advice that how you have handled that you can give us? And, and then I want to ask one quick question. Okay, so I'll be quick then. I'm basically an aerospace engineer. The the domain itself is a male uh, dominated. Um, it's I'm not like biased or something, but it's just, it's the reality. So I've always been accustomed to uh, you know, if I enter a room, there will be twenty men who are like fifty years or sixty years old. So I've always been accustomed to the environment. I know the male um, mindset. So it doesn't matter. I I am equal in my own way. So that is how I think it. But however, I have my co-founder uh, who is also a male. If there is a proper frequency between both of you or your team or even the investors, things just happen, and that's a natural flow. But however, having said that, indeed there is a bias when it comes to investing. That is a very important point that I would like to point like I, that I would like to discuss. Um, the first thing they ask us is, are you married? The investors, uh, if it is a women-based women founder, um, are you married? So, what is your future plans? How long are you planning to, uh, you know, continue your uh, position as a CEO or as a co-founder in your company? Uh, what are we, what are your family plans? If we provide various technical documentation, there is a you know a gap in trust when it comes to female entrepreneurs. So they wanted to know more. They kind of drill you. I, I will never say that. Um, Male entrepreneurs doesn't you know, go through a lot of troubles. They also go through a lot of troubles when it comes to technical discussions and technical documentations required for investments. But when it comes to women, they expect more. And uh, I'm not sure how we are going to you know, balance that. Um, hope there is a change in the future. I'm glad you say that because uh, one of the questions I have got is, um, questions or discuss or comments like you know oh you have a husband so you have a safety net and um, I'm like what makes you think that I don't have a safety net for my own self but uh, it, of course it helps to have a support system but I hope people um, in the audience and in case the first step is by awareness and being intentional of the conversations that we are having with ourselves what we are listening and what we are speaking and um, my my point here was to get this out in the open. So sometimes when you know that these questions or these statements are being said, this is bias. And yes. it is important to understand that what bias sounds like, what bias looks like. Um, the last point before we wrap up this wonderful conversation, I really don't want to leave. I want to continue this conversation further. But if you were to look back, and we'll just do a quick round robin, what would you do differently if you um, have to go back as a founder? Uh, we'll start with Jubnu. One thing. Uh, several things. Uh, I would change the contract that we signed with our investor. We were terribly naive. Secondly, the amount of funding that we had allowed ourselves was very, very uh, little. I think we didn't allow for the Indian conditions. So the level of tension and heartache and white hair is uh, directly due to the level of optimism and trust with which we started, which was not justified in the Indian conditions. A lot of, for example, one of our main areas is digital patient records. And even though we are working with the best hospital, Apollo, 
uh, when you're the first in the business, you don't know how fragmented and incomplete the records are. So first you have to put the systems in place. Only then can you build the business on top of the systems. I think some of that level of frame or foundation that we had to do, we hadn't allowed for it. So I think in retrospect, I would have more mentors and advisors, which we didn't have in crafting our first two to three years worth of business plan. Okay, I think I we might have lost Jubnu's voice, um, but I are we on time or should we be wrapping up? But I want to continue this conversation. Um, unfortunately, I think we are running out of time. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Jugnu. Thank you, Soumya, for being here with us. And thank you to everyone who's watching from wherever you are. I hope you stay healthy, you stay safe, and don't forget to connect with us. Connect with Asia Berlin. Um, we are here to help. We are here to connect. And be sure to let us know that you heard about us and you were watching this. You'll feel wonderful. And stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Uh, right now, we'll break into a short promo, and um, yeah. This is Vandana from W Square. And in our community, it's extremely important to empower our women entrepreneurs. And with the help of Program Design Lab and the Asia Berlin uh, community, we have been able to empower women first with financial literacy, because being successful is as important as being financially independent. The second is digital transformation. With the changes that's happening in the new normal and with the technology being advanced every minute, it's important for women entrepreneurs to be leaders in emerging technology. And the third is self-motivation, because when we are independent and when we are leaders of our own uh, changes, then it's very important to be self-motivating ourselves and to rise up among different challenges that we may face on our entrepreneurship journey. So these three important nuances are important uh, for us to drive in our community of women entrepreneurs and bring about change in this world. Thank you. Hi, welcome back. I wanted to also let you know that um, don't go away yet. We have breakout rooms. You'll have a chance to speak to us and ask questions. And we are looking forward to speak to you. Um, there'll be a short tutorials if you haven't, um, you know, been in big breakout rooms before as to how to go about it. But see you there. Hello, everybody. This is a quick intro how breakout rooms work and how to operate them. So the moment where the breakout rooms become active, I can see this button down here, breakout rooms. I click that button and I see the different rooms. Now I can join in this room, which brings me to the room one. In here, I can now do two different things. One is I can leave the room and that either leave the entire meeting or just meet, leave the breakout room and go back to the main room or I can actually go to a different breakout room by clicking on this button. The main room will always be a tech support room. So if you have a question how to operate the breakout rooms, you can return back to the main room and get your answer from the moderator. Thank you. And um, I hope to see you in the breakout rooms in just a few minutes. Um, I just wanted to wholeheartedly thank you for joining us and making time for this conversation. We really hope you found this useful. Um, it's impossible to complete and talk about the many, many wonderful things and the challenges. But if you stay in touch with us, we promise to bring these topics over to you. For now, bye-bye. Have a fantastic evening, rest of the day, and um, I'll see you in the breakout rooms along with the other um, guests that we had in the. Thank you again from Asia Berlin and all the way from Berlin. Bye bye.